Welcome everyone. So glad that you could join us here this evening. My name is Ashley Hansen. I'm the Associate Vice President for Admissions. I'm speaking with you this evening from my basement. I know we are all in different parts of our homes as you know, you're, we're kind of getting used to this new normal right now. You know, we would love to have you on campus, you know, talking about, you know, what it's like to be a first generation student at Carthage. You know, but until we can do that, we are so glad to be reaching out to you through this platform. Roger Moriano, our Director of Equity and Inclusion, and Anna Thompson, our Student Success Advisor. Um, they are key uh, members of our staff that work with students who are the first in their family to go through this process the in the college process. And they will be a great resource as you make that transition to Carthage. So this evening, Roger and Anna will be giving a presentation, um, but we also want to make sure that we can open it up to questions to you. You will notice that on your screen, there is a chat button. And so there you can simply ask a question to the group. You can ask a question directly to us, the presenters. And then we can reach out and you know answer that either privately um, back in a chat, um, or we can also share with the group as well. Um, for all of you who are joining us here this evening, if you would take just a uh, quick moment to um, write your name in that chat box, so that way we can make sure that we can follow up with any questions after today's presentation as well. So, um, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I am going to turn it over here to Roger and Anna, um, who um, are going to talk with you more about what it's like to be that first generation college student. So Roger, Anna, it's all yours. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, this is Roger Moriano, Assistant Dean of Students and Director of Equity and Inclusion. Um, it's really a pleasure to be able to host you here uh, this evening. Um, and I am coming in to you from my dining room. Uh, so this has been an interesting time for us getting used to this new normal um, that we're involved with. So uh, thanks for joining us this evening. With me is Anna Thompson. Anna? Hi everybody, like I just said, my name's Anna. I work in our Center for Student Success as a Student Success Advisor, and I work in coordinating our First in the Family Pre-Orientation Program, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, today, tonight. Um, I'm in my living room, um, so hopefully you don't hear any loud noises coming from anybody else in the house, but um, hopefully people will be quiet. Um, but I'm happy to be here with you all today and talking a little bit more about first generation students um, along with Roger. Yeah, and, and I also have a dog that's very um, uh, rambunctious. So if you hear uh, him barking, then you'll know what's going on. So, uh, but it's great to be with you this evening. And we just want to really get right into it. And just let you know that um, we do a really, really important amount of work um, in reaching out to our first generation students. I myself was a first generation student way back when, and um, I came from a family um, that basically told me as I was growing up that I was gonna go to college, uh, I was gonna get a good job, and that was the goal. And my mom came here as a teenager from Puerto Rico, and my father came here as a 20 year old uh, from Ecuador, um, and that's all they knew from my brother and I is that you were going to go to college. They didn't really know anything about what college was like. They just knew that we were going. And so I found myself very, very um, lost quite often in, in terms of how I navigated the school, how I understood what needed to be asked, how I got help for resources. And um, I wish we had back then the types of programs that Carthage has right now and really reaching out and understanding the needs of our students. So that's, I wanted to start off just sharing a little bit of that story because that's that's why I feel so connected to this program uh, and what we try to do for our students. And so for this evening, uh, for our itinerary, we're gonna get into just um, a few things um, when it comes to just understanding the definitions and backgrounds of what we mean by first generation. Uh, we're gonna understand a little bit about Carthage's demographics and who makes up the college uh, population. Um, Anna will talk a little bit about the first in the family pre-orientation program, which she's worked really hard to build over the last couple of years. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, ways to get involved in student organizations. And then when we're done, um, we're gonna definitely open it up to any questions you have. And we definitely wanna hear from you on ways that we can support you. And please um, know 
that starting now is a good time to get in the habit of asking questions. I think sometimes we hesitate to do that, but that's a good thing to practice so you can begin advocating for yourself as you move closer to um, starting college. And so um, just to be clear, what we mean by first generation uh, and to define that first generation basically means that neither parent or guardian or family member that um, has uh, been a part of your family has really completed um, your, a bachelor's degree in your household. And so there are specific distinct uh, experiences that happened to folks. And this was my experience. My, my parents only had high school educations. Uh, and like I said, they knew that college was important, but they didn't know anything about it. And so uh, we know from lots of research over decades um, that the experiences of, of first generation students can be very different than uh, from those uh, who have had family members that have attended college in the past. And so um, that's really what we mean by first generation. And then Roger, and so, if I could just add, please. Um, so just to so just to clarify, if you have an older sibling that's already in college or gone to college, like that's okay. You're still. It's really just about your parents' level of education. So I was a first generation. Am a first generation uh, college student, and um, I had an older. I had two older siblings in college um, before I went. But even with some of that knowledge from them it was still difficult to really understand and figure things out when you don't necessarily have parents that run through it and are able to sort of guide you in that way mm -hmm. um so there's a couple different ways that first generation can be defined if you're doing like google searches and things like that so just know that at carthage it's if neither parent or guardian has completed a bachelor's degree um so my in my case too like i my parents have associate degrees but neither of them went to a four-year school and graduated with a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's an important distinction and we know how important it is to understand um, uh, all of these types of terminologies and the experiences that we have. And so um, to give you a little bit of a background, um, here's a, uh, something that I alluded to just a moment ago in terms of the data that's out there and what we know about first-generation college students. And so uh, we know, for example, uh, and this data goes back for the last decade or a little bit more than a decade, that 34% um, of undergraduates were the first in their families to go to college about a decade ago. That's actually um, held pretty steady and is increasing just slightly. Uh, first-generation college students uh, we are seeing are more and more diverse every year. In fact, um, Latinx, uh, Latino, Latina, Hispanic students are the highest rising number of first gen students um, across the country and are the, the largest um, minority in the country right now. Uh, we also um, have a lot of first generation students who enter colleges and universities coming from low income households. So that's something that we've, we've seen more and more, which is actually a very good sign. We are seeing um, access and opportunity being expanded to more and more families. But with that come a number of, of things that we need to pay attention to to make sure that students are successful in their, in their um, journey uh, in, the, in academics. Um, an, a good number, about half of first generation students do enroll at community colleges um, as, as part of the data that's out there. And according to a study that came out just a little over a decade ago, which has held pretty steady to this day, um, first generation students are very, very likely to earn a bachelor's degree if they started a four year institution. And so that's a that's a really important factor. So the community colleges are very, very valuable in, in many ways. But we have found that um, starting at a four year institution and persisting at a four year institution with the ability to actually forge the relationships and the connections, especially at smaller schools like Carthage, is truly important and, and really increases the odds of your success. Um, moving forward. Um, another piece that's also important to, to note is that 11% uh, of low-income first-generation college students graduate with a college degree within six years of enrolling in school. So that's, again, a low number, which means that there are a number of challenges that students face. And this is something that we're very much paying attention to and providing as many resources in place as possible so that you can feel supported, that you know you're supported, you know what you need to do to advocate for yourself. And if you find yourself right now as a junior or a senior in high school, having no idea of what college is gonna be like and what to ask, that's a pretty normal situation that you're in as a first generation student, so just know that. And participating in programs like this and then asking important questions when you actually visit campuses is how you start to accumulate the knowledge you need and you start getting more and more confidence as you do that, okay? And so uh, going to the next slide real quick, we have um, even more data that's come our way. Um, Campus Labs uh, is an organization that does 
um, a lot of uh, research in these areas. And so Campus Labs um, has done really important research that shows that students, first generation students, actually in many ways outperform students that are not first generation. There's a number of factors that come into that and, and that might explain that. Uh, some of the predominant factors that might explain it is the motivation students have to really do well to be the first in their family to graduate, the motivation to really, um, you know, to actually uh, persist and to succeed and so forth. And so that's a really important factor. Um, and if we go to the next slide, the, um, the next slide kind of explains a little bit of the graph here. So Campus Labs did a quite an extensive study here. They did about um, three quarters of a million uh, folks that responded. To, the, um, to this uh, report. And 14% of respondents said that neither of their programs nor guardians held a four-year degree, which fits the definition we have for a first generation. Uh, but then uh, they accumulated the responses. And we saw, as I mentioned earlier, that they outscored their peers, first-gen students outscored their peers in a lot of different important categories of success, but they did lag behind uh, in resiliency or the ability for students to overcome challenging situations or stressful events. And that's a really key thing to impo an important factor to pay attention to. Um, what that tells us is that first generation students are super motivated, they're doing super well, they are um, succeeding and so forth. But for those students that might be struggling before they actually start succeeding and they maybe are unsure of themselves or lose confidence along the way, they are immediately losing confidence quickly and then not persisting. So, and that has to be attributed to basically students not knowing where to go for help, not knowing how to find that support, not knowing how to connect and how to persevere in those moments when they're not um, being successful. So that's who we want to capture. If, if you're doing really well as a first generation student, we want you to continue doing well. But for those of you who might struggle early on, we need you to have the knowledge and the tools so that you know where to get that support because we know you're capable of being successful but we want you to have the information necessary to be successful okay and so if we uh move ahead here um we'll talk a little bit about first gener generation students at carthage and so uh this past school year the school year that we're in right now uh about a quarter of our students uh, were full-time for that were for full-time first-time freshmen uh were first gen um and 35 percent of those students that identify as first gen participate in the pre-orientation program called first in the family so first in the family anna's going to talk about here shortly um and, and how that came about and what it does but it's a it's such an important first start and first connection that we have with students that really gets the ball rolling into really providing the resources and the foundation for your success um 23 of full-time traditional undergraduates at carthage are first generation so it's not a small number so when you come to carthage you will be surrounded by a lot of first generation students. And the funny thing about first generation students, and this was definitely true in my story, I had no idea there were that many first generation students because none of us said anything because we thought we were the only ones, right? We were the only ones that didn't know anything. We were the only ones that didn't know what to ask. We were the only ones that were um, felt self-conscious about asking like, where do I go for help for money or whatever? Uh, and, and asking for financial aid and money is something that you need to overcome. You need to be able to actually do that. Over 98% of our students receive some form of, form of financial aid at Carthage. So you are not alone. And so when you need that resource, please ask for it and get to know who can, who can support you in that process. So do we wanna jump into the first in the family? Yes, we sure can. Thanks, Roger. Uh -huh. um, so all the pictures you've been seeing so far are all from First in the Family, and you'll see more of those as we keep going. But um, First in the Family is a pre-orientation. So what that means is that all new students are, who are coming into Carthage in the fall will participate in new student orientation, which happens those three days leading up to when you're gonna begin your classes. So the pre-orientation has you come in a little bit before that, um, about two and a half days early than all the rest of the new students would be arriving to come to campus early and start doing some some really intentional things to get you adjusted to campus, meeting people, connecting to faculty and current students um, so that you're feeling a little bit more um, ready to go when new student orientation starts. Um, even though orientation is meant to get you used to campus and help you understand things about Carthage and about college. Sometimes when you're coming into that with, like Roger said earlier, like you don't even know what questions to ask and you may just be feeling really unsure about how you're supposed to even navigate new student orientation. 
which I certainly was when I was going to college and starting it off. Um, this experience helps you kind of ease into that. And the whole point of this program is to recognize that you may not have all the information and you may not even know what information you're missing. So we help you to kind of gather all of that and give you a guided experience to start connecting to resources. So this experience is completely optional. Um, it's not required for first generation students, but we, we encourage you to do it if you're able. Um, we do have a limited number of spots and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so we'll talk about sign up deadlines and things like that. So you have all the information for this upcoming fall program. Um, but as I mentioned, the main focus for first in the family includes um, we, uh, campus resources. So one of the big components of the second day that you're on campus is a huge campus scavenger hunt where you're going around to different offices and learning about what they do, who works there, how can they help you. So if you have no idea like who the provost is, um, that's something you would learn as a part of the scavenger hunt and where they're located. Um, at, you know, and the provost being the, you know, sort of academic lead of the college. Um, so you start to learn some of those terms and where these people are and why you would use them. Um, so starting that scavenger hunt not only gives you that information, but then you start to learn your way around. And even though Carthage is a small campus and we're one cozy little road, um, it sometimes can still be daunting when you are trying to find a certain office in a building and you just, you don't know how to get there. So this will help through that. Um, the building social connections is a huge piece of this. Of the last three years that we've run this program, I think by and large, the one thing the students say they got the most out of it was that they made their friends. They made friends, they got to feel like they had connections to other incoming first generation freshmen who understood what they were going through. And they got to see familiar faces during new student orientation and they got to see familiar faces just throughout the first couple of weeks on campus as they were walking around, they could say hi to people and that made them feel more comfortable. And then another big piece is meeting um, first generation faculty. So Carthage has a good number of faculty and staff like Roger and I, who are also um, first generation college students. Um, so we do a, a meet and greet sort of round table with faculty who we're first in their families to go to college and are now working as faculty in a college setting. And so you get that um, unique perspective and also learn like their advice on, you know, being in their classrooms and how to interact with faculty to the, you know, to the best of your benefit. Um, and then we also bring in uh, current students in a few different ways. We have a panel of first generation students um, that are currently attending Carthage. And then we have a built in mentoring program, which I'll talk about more in a second. Um, but this will pull the first in the family pre-orientation program into the school year so that it doesn't just end after that two and a half days, but then you have a direct link to an assigned mentor who will, who's a sophomore, junior, or senior, who's also first generation, who can help guide you through that first semester, that second semester through your whole first year, and hopefully beyond because you'll have built that connection with them. So this program is in its fourth year. Um, so it started in 2017. Um, let me just pull up that information. So in its very first year, we had 37 students participate and we didn't have any student mentors at that point. Um, in 2018, it grew a little bit and we had 48 students come through and we added nine mentors. So those were students who went through the program the year before who wanted to come back and sort of help those incoming students navigate the pre-orientation and then be resources for them throughout the year as well. And then in 2019, uh, last year, we jumped even more and we had 60 students participate and we had 18 mentors. So that number doubled. Um, and that picture there is our group of fabulous 18 mentors that we had helping me out last year. Um, and every single one of those students went through first in the family themselves. Um, and enjoyed it and wanted to be a part of it again and give back to the students coming in um, as freshmen. So this upcoming year, we're again hoping to have 60 students participate. Um, we have a little bit of a shift where we will have still have students helping during the pre-orientation 
and they'll be called pre-orientation leaders and they will they will have done first in the family in the past but the new addition this year is that built-in mentoring program has grown a lot so currently there will be 44 additional mentors joining that group of pre-orientation leaders for a total of 57 current Carthage students who want to help mentor the incoming first generation students to help them be as successful as possible so what that means is that in the past when we've had you know one mentor to six freshmen or one mentor to four freshmen this year you'll get one mentor who's just assigned to you and is there to help you with whatever you need whether that's just somebody to hang out with someone to ask questions about that you might be too scared or um, you know to ask a staff member or you just don't know who that staff member is to ask they're your student connection to get those answers so i talked a little bit about the mentoring program already but here are some of our awesome mentors from um i think these are all from last year's program um so they did all sorts of awesome things um, from helping the students move in because you're moving in a little early so you don't get to get necessarily get all the help that the big move in gets so our mentors helped out with that um, they participate in all of the activities that we do in the pre-orientation um, which includes all the fun things like going to the farmers markets and going bowling and some of those social activities that we build in um, so not only is this an opportunity for you as a first time freshman to come in and get some of that additional support and guidance, but you then build in an opportunity for yourself to participate as a mentor or as a pre orientation leader in future years. So you're also setting yourself up to potentially get, you know, a student leadership on campus that allows you to have a big impact on other students um, in future years as well. So um, for the 2020 program, um, here are some of the dates. Um, so the program this year um, would take place September 3rd through the 5th, and that's a Thursday to a Saturday, with new student orientation starting that next Sunday on the 6th. Um, as of right now, the sign-up period um, will begin on June 2nd, um, and you should be receiving some information via mail and email for what that registration um, process looks like from admissions. Um, and then you have until July 17th to sign up. Um, in previous years, the program has filled up, I would say within the first month um, of that registration period. And we do start a wait list in case there's any students that end up not being able to come and things like that. But if you're interested, I would definitely encourage you to sign up as soon as you can. Um, and we can answer questions about that if you have them. Do you want to add anything about that, Roger? Yeah, I, I think that uh, the other thing I wanted to mention um, is obviously we are coming to you from our homes because of the situation <laughs> that we're in right now, right? So uh, we are moving forward as if the fall semester is going to happen just like normal. Uh, but we do want to mention to you that if there are changes, please pay attention to our website. Pay attention to updates that continue to come. Um, you know, there there's so many uh, uncertain. Uh, there's so much uncertainty right now about what the fall might look like. And it all depends on what happens with uh, government decisions and all of that kind of stuff and how fast the, uh, the virus spreads. So uh, please pay attention to what's happening on our website uh, and we will have regular updates come as quickly as we know so that we can keep you updated on these things. I will tell you that um, in the pos worst case possible scenario, uh, we will still have this program happen, but it, it might happen virtually or at least a good chunk of it might happen virtually. So, uh, but we are still gonna connect with you. We're still gonna stay on top of it just as we're doing for our students right now. We are connecting daily with them. Uh, we are connecting as often as we can to make them feel like their experience is as close to uh, an on-campus experience as possible. So just wanted to put that out there as well. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so the last piece I wanted to talk about is that we do have a student organization specifically for first generation students. It's called 1G. Um, it was created pretty recently. So its first iteration was in 2018. Um, any student is welcome to join. So you don't have to be first generation to join the organization, but the purpose is to support the needs of first generation students um, and build community for first gen students and, and allies of first generation students. Um, and that's through, you know, the student org meetings and the programs that they put on. Um, and then like roughly you're meeting once a month at, with the entire organization um, for the student org meetings. 
Um, and then they hold um, events here and there. Um, in the first year, they did a really cool storytelling event where the different members got to talk a little bit about their own background and their own journey and what it means to them to be first generation because there are, just as you've seen between Roger and I, there are a lot of different ways that students are first gen and how they come to campus with that identity. Um, and then this last semester, we did a big focus on scholarships and how to find them and how to apply for them and continue, how do you continue to do that the entire time that you're in college? Because it's definitely not something that you're just doing before you get here. You can be applying to scholarships continually. Um, so that was a big focus last semester. And then two kind of fun things is that they have these fun stickers, which is the picture on the screen um, that anybody, any first gen student can come get and put on their laptop or wherever they want to put it. Um, and then they also got graduation stoles um, uh, put into place for any member of 1G of the student org who graduates can wear a graduation stole to designate themselves as a member of that organization and as a first generation graduate. So that's pretty fun. Um, and then one other piece that this, this org actually got put together were these little like placard cards that go outside faculty and staff offices that designates them as first generation college student graduates um, so that any student could, you know, as they're walking up to an office could see that it basically says like, I'm a first gen graduate, ask me how I did it. Um, so they can kind of see that they're, they're everywhere and they're there to help you. Um, and so that kind of, that was a cool, um, cool thing that got put into place so that it's more visual representation of the faculty and staff on campus who also were first gen. So Anna, I did notice that there's some, I think there's a question or two coming in. Um, so at this point, are we cool with opening it up to some questions? Yeah, we are ready for questions. Okay. okay, great. So I did see, let me just pull it up here. I didn't know if Ashley wanted to. Yeah, maybe moderate for us. One question that we had was if for a student who signs up for the first in the family programming, um, do they end up rooming together since they move in early? Oh, that's a great question. Um, not necessarily. The move in the move in process and roommate assignment is, is separate from first in the family sign up. We have had a couple roommate groups or uh, roommate clusters in the past. Um, just I think by, by chance or they talk to each other and they both decided to sign up for it because they were both first gen. Um, but it wouldn't be an automatic um, like roommate assignment based on your first generation, like first in the family participation. But they do get to move in, um, what is it, a day or two early, a couple yeah. days early. Yep, so uh, even so if your roommate isn't moving in early, <coughs> you, st you still would move in early if you are a part of that first in the family group. Yeah, a little bit of incentive to get you to join us. <laughs> yes. So. For those of you who are joining us here this evening, you know, please do feel free to ask questions in the chat feature or the question and answer. So and the next question, if the student doesn't get into the first in the family generation, do they still get the stole for graduation? Yes, so the stole is a, for the students who are part of the student organization, which any student can join. Um, regardless of whether they did first in the family. So as long as you're a member of the student organization, the 1G First Gen Student Org, then you would get the graduation stool. Mm -hmm. So Anna and Roger, what surprised you the most um, coming in as a first generation college student that you weren't quite expecting? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Um... It's hard because, you know, back then that was the age of like VHSs and cassette tapes. And stuff. Um, I, I think um, I think what was hard is that I could not get over how much everybody else seemed to know what they were doing. Um, and I had a hard time with that. Um, and so in an effort, because I was too proud and I was too young and, and um, uh, not able to advocate for myself at that point, um, I just, you know, I tried to figure it out on my own and it did hurt me a little bit. And so academically and, and you know, not feeling like I fit in. Uh, so come to find out as years go by and working in higher education that a lot of the people that weren't even first gen didn't know what they were doing. So, you know, 
a lot of people are good at hiding it or pretending like they have their stuff together. But um, if you find yourself in a situation where you just are, are a little bit lost, um, do yourself a favor and really just connect with some folks. And, and this program is a great way to do that because once you get into it, and, and as you, if you were listening when Anna was describing the experience, the amount of friendships and closeness that you see that people gather um, and get out of the experience is amazing. And we see students um, stay very, very close after the experience. And it's really heartening to see people jump into the full orientation program already feeling like they're a little bit connected, which is a little bit of a head start, but in some ways it's, it's similar to the head start that second and third generation students already have, right? So it's a really, really great opportunity to do that. So get yourself in the habit, just like you're doing tonight. You've decided to jump in, you, you decided to be a part of this tonight. That's a great first step. So getting into the habit of doing that consistently is gonna help you along the way. Yeah, and I would just say, um... You're, you're all already ahead of where I was when I was going into school. You already know your first gen, you're looking into resources. I think what I, I didn't even know what first generation was or meant until after I graduated from undergrad. So I was that first generation. I didn't even understand it. Um, so I think what surprised me most um, with what Roger said was just, I've always felt like I was like, am I missing Am I missing something? Where do people get this information? And um, while my parents were very supportive, they just didn't know how to, you know, tell me how I'm supposed to apply for more financial aid or how am I supposed to pay this bill or how do I get a work study job? Like they didn't understand any of those questions. So um, by building in some of those, like by finding some, you know, friends and some current students who you know, did know those things. Like I just used my resources. I was like, okay, you seem to get it. So it helped me out here. Um, and not being afraid to say like, I don't understand that and, and looking for help. Awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll also add that um, if, if uh, you happen to be a student that identifies as a member of an underrepresented group um, and, or, uh, you know, it could be um, race, ethnicity, religion, uh, socioeconomic or what have you, um, that seems to compound the lack of confidence you might feel if you don't feel like you're connecting right away. So please know that we have a lot of support services. For example, my office, uh, when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're set to really um, reach out and make underrepresented students feel very connected and very supported. And I wanna, I wanna make this very, very clear to all of you. Um, regardless of where you apply to go to college, at Carthage, uh, it's a pretty rigorous process to get in, uh, but you have the ability to get in. And if you are accepted to Carthage, you are going to be expected to do well. We believe that you have all the ability to do well. So if you begin doubting yourself because of the things that you're going through, please know it's okay. It's normal to doubt, but seek out that help because you were admitted because we believe you are capable of doing excellent work. It's already something that we know about, about you. And so don't let the factors that are causing you a lack of confidence to, to have you doubt your academic abilities, because if it starts happening, let us know so we can support you. And so many students have moments of doubt in their academic journey. And by getting the support that they need, they overcome that and they are, are supported along the way and they become stronger students as a result. So please know that, that we're here to support you because we believe in you. Awesome. Thank you both. Anna, mm -hmm. this is a great question for you. What is a, a success advisor? Oh, yes. Great question. Um, so the Student Success Advisors are part of Carthage's holistic advising model, which include um, the Student Success Advisors, are career specialists, and faculty advising. So the Student Success Advisors role is really that um, overall support for your student success. So while you'll have a faculty advisor um, to help you with academic questions and degree planning and um, some of those like course specific things to your major. And you'll have a career specialist to help you um, think about you know, career exploration and preparing for jobs and internships and things like that through our Aspire Center. The Student Success Advisor is almost there to help you with everything else. So um, that could be a huge part of some of the first generation um, you know, challenges that you may find out like, I have a hold on my account and I don't know what that means. That's where your student success advisor would come in and help you figure out what it is, how to get it off, um, and help you through any of those other, um, you know, obstacles you may face or if you have questions and you just don't know, am I supposed to ask my faculty advisor or who that you, you ask your success advisor. So um, we're truly, our office is just here to support 
the students in, in any way that we can as a part of the holistic advising model. Um, so one question, apart from the, the G1, what group, what other support systems does Carthage have for first generation students who aren't ready to throw themselves into a program of the sorts? Yeah, there's a lot, um, you know, so one thing that we encourage students to do is to really um, uh, stretch yourself a little bit. And, and so uh, for some folks that might consider themselves really, really outgoing and extroverted, maybe it's, it's um, you know, trying out a little bit of, of holding back and letting others take the lead. And, and if you find yourself to be a little bit shy or introverted, maybe it's taking some chances and jumping into a club meeting or signing up to be a part of a club. Uh, we have at any point during any school year, anywhere from 110 to 130 or 140 student organizations in existence on campus through all sorts of interests. And so that's something that we really, really encourage students to do, not just from a social connecting point of view, but also from a practical success point of view. Um, data after data and research year after year shows that students who are involved outside the classroom outperform their peers who are not involved at all. And so getting yourself involved will get you connected. So if you don't find yourself ready to jump into something like First in the Family right away, there are a number of great stu student organizations that you can cho choose to be a part of. Um, I myself work closely with the cultural student organizations. So um, for example, we have quite a few student organizations um, that, um, that really bring people together uh, based on commonalities. So we have our Black Student Union, we have our Latinx United, we have the Asian Pacific um, American Coalition of Carthage, we have our LGBTSA group, we have um, a Better Together group, which is an interfaith group, we have Students Against Sexism in Society, we have Advocates for Social Change, a number of really great organizations that get together for important causes. But in, in, if that's not your cup of tea, there's other organizations just uh, of students who are just interested in just hiking or you know doing very, very simple activities, um, philosophy clubs and all that kind of stuff. So there's always a little niche you can find yourself on campus and, and what fits best for you. And that's the beauty of our campus community and how diverse it is that you can find your community there. Um, and oftentimes you'll hear people say, well, you need to be th in this club or that club. Uh, and really it's just you for you to decide. And if there's not a club there that you um, see that has your interest, you could create your own club as well. It's a very, very simple and quick process to do so. And it'll help, help start a new tradition on campus as well. But there's endless opportunities to, to do that as well. Sorry, my phone just fell. <laughs> so endless opportunities for you to get engaged and to really get involved. Um, and the other thing I'll add is if you don't find yourself in a social setting trying to get involved, please come talk to us. Um, I work with a number of students and I spend time with a lot of students that we're, aren't necessarily really involved at all, but just pop into my office every week just to chit chat about certain things that they uh, want to talk about or you know, maybe some um, hurdle they needed to overcome in terms of how to study for an exam. Um, we're here, we're, us staff, like the Center for Student Success, like Anna mentioned, my office and others, we're here for that. Not only do we do programs, we are here to listen to you and to support you and to help guide you. So that if you feel like my office and the, and the space that we have there for diversity is, is a comfortable spot for you to study, then you come and study in that space. Uh, so we're open to all of that. And that's the beauty of a small campus is you get to know us on an individual level, um, so much so that we're, we're looking out for you and making sure you're okay. Are there any other questions that our, our guests have here this evening? You know, please feel free to drop it into the chat feature and we're happy to answer it. You know, this would end the formal presentation here this evening, but we will be available here for a couple of minutes to an answer any other questions as well. Hey, I'll, I'll just add for any of you out there that are interested in any diversity, equity and inclusion programs, we have a very strong presence um, on Instagram. So if you follow at Carthage Diversity on Instagram, um, you will see all the diversity programs that we have going on and some of the, the culture that we've built. Um, we also have at Carthage Involvement. We have at Carthage Faith and Spirituality, a number of, of great Instagram um, accounts that you could follow along to really get connected early before you get to campus to see what we're all about. 
Thank you, Roger and Anna, for spending the evening with us. And so again, for everyone who joined us this evening, thank you. You know, we will be in touch with you as you're going through this college search, trying to make final decisions, but also for the juniors here who are just starting it, we are with you throughout this. Um, but again, thank you for attending here tonight. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks, Anna. And thanks to all of you for joining us. We really uh, look forward to meeting you one day. Uh, and please uh, stay in touch with us. We're looking forward to meeting you. Yes, thank you. Ariana, if you are still on the line, um, I do see your question that just came through about the most unique thing about Carthage and what leads most students to Carthage. And, you know, for myself, I've been at Carthage now for 13 years. And so it has become my home, not only for myself, but for my family. I have a four year old and a 22 month old, um, both girls. And so it, it has become their home. But what really makes Carthage unique is the people, the students, the faculty and staff. It is a community. There's people and resources here when you need it. You know, especially now as we're going through these uncertain times, the students have a lot of people in place to make sure that they are remaining successful and just there um, to talk to. So, you know, when students choose Carthage, it's because that it's the place they feel like they belong and they feel like they can make a difference and they can grow and along the way there'll be tears and frustrations, but it's community. That is one word that sums up Carthage the best. So thank you again all for attending. I will be closing the meeting down in just one minute, but the admissions and financial aid staff will be following up to see if there's any additional questions that you have. Enjoy your evening.